Hey everyone, so today I want to cover a pretty simple particle system and it's really uh, kind of part one of part two, I guess. So um, originally I was looking at the, the, the fireworks particle animation that's the ships with, with Resolve and it's pretty cool, but it has a little bit to be desired in terms of, uh, in terms of realism. So one of the things that I didn't like about it is just the, the, uh, the shell when it's launched, it's just a, a, a simple white dot and then we kind of you know, go into the fireworks explosion. So this sort of, I guess, part one, if you want to call it that, is really just looking at the launching of the shell. And I'm going to be covering uh, in a further tutorial uh, the actual firework explosion. So the final product is kind of something that you see here. And I've modeled this after a video that I've linked in the, in the description. It's, uh, you know, three or four seconds into the video. It's this uh, first shell that launches, and then we see the, the, the explosion that comes after it. But right now, I'm just going to be focusing on this, this trail here. So you could use this trail for a number of different applications. If you're doing a launch of a rocket or something, um, I'm actually going to be using this, what you see here, this is going to turn into the actual individual trails that you'll see coming out of the final uh, fireworks animation. But that's for another tutorial. We're just going to focus on this for now. So let's just do a quick overview of what we see here. I've kind of set things up in a mo modular fashion to be sort of easy to understand. So first here we have this shell and we're going to go through all these in detail. But over here I have the shell. So the shell is actually uh, not visible here. I I've set the size to zero. So it's really just something that's sort of leading the start of this trail. And we're using this emitter over here under this trail section to emit particles as this first shell sort of goes. So there's one particle that gets launched originally and then that particle is spawning this trail as it goes along. Now we have a couple forces that are working on this shell here and that's a directional force so that's kind of simulating our gravity and then we have some turbulence which is kind of giving it this you know sort of this sort of wiggling motion as it goes up into the sky. So when we get over to this trail section we have a spawn node, a P spawn node down here and we have fast noise that's sort of pumped into that. And um, I'm not going to go too, into too much details in this here. I have a tutorial that I'll link above where I've gone to this in, in great de detail how this fast noise works. So this fast noise is essentially something I've kind of cut and paste with some small modifications uh, of the previous tutorial and I'll go over those changes as we go through things. Over here I have what I called my camera sort of render section so that's my 3D camera as well as my two render nodes and again I'm not going to be going into this in, uh, in any detail. Um, I have a playlist that I'll put up above now that goes through all the basics of Fusion and that's going to explain how these rendered nodes work and all that and the camera works and all that type of stuff. Finally, I have this post-processing section where I just add a blur and I see this camera shake that we sort of see here. And again, I've modeled this off that video that I've linked in the, in the description. And so, you know, we see um, as the shell is initially launched, um, it's kind of simulating as if somebody was, oh, okay, well, there it goes and sort of, sort of trying to center this, this trail. And then there's a little bit of camera shake as they kind of stabilize on, on the shell as it reaches up into the sky. Uh, finally, we have this media out. And I also have this node here, which is a reference node. It's a media in node. It's essentially just a JPEG. And I'm going to use that to help uh, you know, pick the colors and sort of model this, this trail here. So with that uh, being said, let's get right into it. All right, so let's start walking through things one by one here. So first, let's just focus on this shell over here. So what I've done is I've kind of gone through all these nodes and I've disabled a bunch of them. Every, every node that you see is showing up as black, I've temporarily disabled. So all we're really looking at here is this P emitter. And if we follow the chain, that P emitter comes through a couple nodes that are turned off over to the renderer. This is a renderer that's set up in 3D mode to go into this 3D renderer. And we come off. So right now, all we're looking at is the emitter. And I was saying earlier that the emitter is invisible, uh, so I've just cranked up the size temporarily now just so we can sort of see what we, what we have here. In some of the past tutorials, the, the, the smoke tutorial that, that, I was, that I was doing, we talk about um, a static region that sort of sits in one place and particles are emitted out from that. Well, this is a little bit different because we're sort of launching the shell up into, up into the sky. So the way that I've decided to do things is to take a, a single particle that represents this shell here, and then we're going to be using this, this P-spawn emitter to add the trail as we go. So some other ways that I thought of doing this was to, to sort of animate the, the actual region. And the idea of that would be I wouldn't have to use a spawn emitter. I could just take that region and move the region and sort of drop particles out of that as, as we go. I couldn't get that to work though. So this is a pretty simple solution. Um, and it, it's easy to sort of modify if we want to launch multiple shells. This is a nice system that's sort of set up to work. So right now I only have it launching a single shell, but if we wanted to launch a bunch more, which I showed in sort of that little intro video at the start, all that was was really cranking up the number of particles that I was emitting here, and then you sort of get this effect of multiple particle trails. So as far as settings go, this one's pretty straightforward, pretty out of the box. 
Um, if you take a look at the number here, what I've done is I've just set up an animation on the number. So I'm going to bring up my spline editor here, tutorial above of the spline editor details if you wanted to look into that. Um, and then I, I'm just going to highlight the number down here. I'm just going to pause the animation for a second and I'm going to expand things here. So all I've done here is I set a frame zero, I, I launch one shell, and then by the second frame we're down to nothing. So that's a very simple way just to have a single particle. What I've also done just for fun is uh, right here at frame 40, I put another keyframe down at zero. The reason I did that is you can do this selection over here, for example, and I could come down to this uh, control down here, which is set loop, and that will effectively um, every, in this case, 40 frames, launch another shell. So if I play that here, we just sort of see this kind of thing, right? So this is how we could get some multiple fireworks kind of happening if we wanted to. But for now, we're going to undo that and we're going to keep it just to a single shell at the start. So that's the number. I have my lifespan set up to 188. Um, everything else down here is default. There's some velocity, uh, very small velocity changes. Here's the numbers that I did here. I have some velocity variance. And again, this doesn't really matter for this single shell. But once you start launching multiple shells, uh, this would come into play a little bit to give it some variety. And then I play a little bit with the angle and the angle variance down here to get a bit of, uh, a bit of variety. Rotation and spin, nothing happening there. So if we come up over here and we click onto the sets. So here, um, and again, I'm going to link above the sets tutorial. So this particle here is set to set number one, and my spawn particles are going to be set to set number two. If you've never seen sets before, um, I urge you to check out that tutorial, but I think uh, sets are simple enough that we can kind of, that you'll be able to sort of get the flavor through just watching this video. But if you need something more in depth, please check out that other video. Point to remember is this over here, this shell is set up to set number one, and this emitter over here is set up to set number two. So if you've watched my video on particle emitters, these are two different types of emitters. This is just sort of a basic emitter. And then this here is a spawn emitter where it's going to spawn off of another particle. And this concept of sets and spawn part our spawn emitters and, and, and regular emitters, we're going to be using that um, as we develop the second half of the series, which is the, uh, the actual fireworks, because we're going to be spawning even more stuff off of this shell here. When it explodes, we're going to want to spawn, uh, you know, a whole bunch of, 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 of trails of, of the fireworks. I think I was playing with some animations on these earlier. You can ignore these now because the size is essentially zero. So visually, just you're not even going to see this. Okay, so let's go down to this directional force now. So this this is a node on itself called directional force. It's a very simple node, and you can just use it to sort of put uh, a force that you can apply to um, any number of particles. So let's turn this one on. Well, let me play the animation first. So it's off right now, um, and we see you know we set our velocity. This particle it just kind of goes up forever. So this directional force will act as our gravity. So let's turn this on, and then we get, we're going to see that the, that just sort of slows as it goes up. And you can see that it's sort of leaning off to the side a little bit too, and that's because I have some some variance on uh, on the, my on my launch angle for that initial particle system. Now, if you come over to this next one here, this is the uh, conditions tab, and in there we have another sets um, section here. So what I have is I have set one selected and then under set mode, I have this effect specified sets. So what that means is this directional force is going to act on only set one. It is not going to act on set two. So this spawn emitter down here is going to be set up to set two. So it is going to ignore this directional force. If I wanted this spawn emitter to be subject to this directional force, I would just click set two. And now I would have, you know, quote, gravity applying to the, the, this trail as well. And we're going to actually do that because you can just play with, it's, it's, it's amazing the variety of different effects you can get just by um, clicking this little button here and having these two things here apply to this as well. But anyway, by default, this and this only apply to this over here. So we're going to take that off for now. And I haven't done any other changes to this. So very straightforward here. All I've done is set the direction and the strength, essentially. Okay, so now we go on to our turbulence over here. So I click on turbulence and this is just going to simulate kind of the wobbling nature of, of, a, of the shell as it sort of goes up into the sky. So, so I looked at some pictures of these firework shells and, and the video that I'm modeling this after is um, a 24 inch shell. That's two feet in diameter. That's a massive bomb. And so I don't know much about fireworks and how they're shaped. I thought they would be more like sort of rocket type things, but this actually looks like just a big old sphere. So uh, when these sort of spheres are launched up into 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 the sky, they kind of I imagine um, I'm not sure how rotation is sort of applied to those, but I imagine it kind of knuckleballs its way through the through the air, and that's why you kind of see this 
sort of wobbly nature as these as these shells sort of launch up into into the sky. And for a, for a lot of the smaller fireworks, when I go to a fireworks show, you, you don't even really notice these shells being launched. I think you just notice in this particular video because these things are gigantic. So that's this whole section here. So that just covers the shell. So let's move on to the trail now. So inside this trail section here, we just have two notes here. So we have this P-spawn emitter here, and we also have this fast noise here. So this fast noise, uh, there's quite a bit of detail into sort of understanding how this works, and that's the tutorial that I that I that I linked at, at earlier. So I won't be going over this in any more detail. Just a, a very quick review. So let's play this animation here. So let's take our uh, trail, and we're just going to turn it back on again. And I'm going to go over to our shell. I'm just going to take the size, which is from our emitter, and I'm going to bring that back down to zero. So all we see is this little trail here. So anything that I have sort of zipped up here means I haven't done any modifications. It just helped keep things clean if you wanted to take a look at these values as I, as I go through things. So a couple animations. We're animating the number. We're also animating the lifespan here. So let's take a look at those. So we'll bring up the spline editor and I have the P spawn smoke trail selected here. And let's just take a look. I'm going to turn everything off except for the number. And I'm just going to pause that for a second. So as far as the number is concerned, I'm using sort of the same strategy that I was using for this initial emitter here. I have one particle per second being admit, em, emitted for the first 120 frames, and then I slowly drop off down to, uh, to nothing at the 130th frame. And I came up with these values just by playing sort of around to try to match the, the reference that, that I was using. So that's how number works in terms of lifespan. So we'll take this off here and we'll come down to lifespan. So lifespan, I sort of have this sort of falling off here. This really doesn't do a whole lot as far as as, as far as a difference here. Um, it was really just to sort of shape this trail a little bit. So if I just play this animation, what I'll do is I'll just right click on lifespan here. I'll just let this run once. And now I'm just gonna remove it and let it run again. Oh, so that's down to 16, that's obviously too short. So let me set it up to sort of what it was before. And so I just set it up to about 157 frames and it looks something like this. I think this is pretty good as well, so it's really just a, a matter of taste. I was just sort of playing around with values just to, to sort of fine-tune things. Getting into a system even even as simple as this, you, there's just so many knobs and levers to turn that, that some of them have greater effect than others. Um, but in any case, I'll just do an undo here, and we're back to this shape here. Now that I see that, I actually liked it better with the sort of default lifespan, but in any case, we'll just keep it like this. Okay, so now we move into uh, the sets over here. And again, this here is defining that this emitter here, the spawn emitter, is set number two, which means that none of these here will be applied to this set here. Just to show for example though, so I'll let this run here and I'm going to put the turbulence, I'm going to come up to the turbulence, I'm going to go up here to conditions, and I'm now going to apply this to set number two. And then we see pretty cool effect here. Obviously not what we're going for, but there could be a lot of uses for that certainly. So let's just take that off. And we could also do the same thing with with the force, but we're not going to do that right now. And so I'll bring up the fast noise here. So this is what the fast noise looks like. So so this whole section here, again, I covered this in detail, so I, I don't want to go through this right now, um, except to say that the style is a bitmap, which means it enables this triangle here, this bitmap. Then I can pipe in this fast noise into the p-spawn. Um, I've set my animation here to uh, uh, particle birth time, and the style bitmap is fast noise, which is referencing this node here. In terms of the color, I'm just going to pull up this reference. So this reference here was just a screen grab I took from that reference video. And if I just run my animation here, so all I did is essentially for this color over life here, I just set up all these different uh, nodes on this, this color over life and I just use this uh, color picker here to effectively sample you know, this whole trail here and got something that looks kind of like this. Okay, so now we're down to the size, so I'll turn off lifespan. And again, I was sort of playing with this to taste. I think if I were to take the size off, I'm going to just do a remove the size here. Um, you can see what it did to the trail. It just made it a little bit thinner. And that's because it's responding to the size over life here. So if I were to take this and just kind of crank it up, well, then I would sort of thicken that bottom trail. And again, all these little changes that I'm making now, I seem to actually like a little bit better um, than what I had originally. But in any case, we'll stick with what we have. So I undo, undo, that's the trail that we have there. We have a little bit of size variance applied. And then again, we have the size over life here. So how the size over life works here is this is time zero. Was when the particle is born, this is when the particle dies. So it just gets smaller. So we, if we were to want a bit of a thicker trail at the end, um, as you can see a bit of a thicker trail here, we can kind of take this 
end node here and crank it up and then we get a bit of a thicker trail at the end. So let me just put the fast noise back up here. I'm not going to go through the details of this, but I will just click through these quickly if, if you want to sort of grab these values here. I didn't do anything on these last two ones. Okay, so let's turn our attention over to this camera slash render section here. So um, this render note here and this render note here, these are sort of straight out of the box. I haven't done anything there. Um, so I won't go into those in any detail, but let's take a look at the camera. So I brought the camera up over in this viewer over here and I have the animation set up here on the spline editor and I'm, all I'm doing is just taking the XY rotation and I'm just kind of mimicking uh, what a human sort of might do in terms of tracking this, uh, the, the, this shell as it, as it goes up into the sky. And again, I was just really sort of playing around with this here just to, to get something to look kind of, kind of natural. Um, what I also have done is in this next section here, I've put some camera shake that, uh, that, that makes things look a little bit more organic because right at the end here during this section here, it's as if the, the, the person is, is, is holding the camera completely still. And I know for all the photographers out there, that would be a, a very envious skill to have. So here are the settings for the camera and then go over here and here's are the two parameters that I'm animating. Okay, so let's take a look at these last two nodes here in this post uh, processing section. And I have a blur and I have a camera shake. So we'll start with the camera shake because that one's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So um, we come to camera shake, I'll turn on the, the animations that I've, I've put here. Um, I have the camera shaking uh, much more during sort of that initial phase of, of focusing on the shell. And then I've just kind of, you know, have a little bit of camera shake uh, sort of happening, happening down here. And again, I was just sort of playing with these values till I got something that felt right. So those are the settings there, fairly straightforward with that. And let me turn it on, I guess. Um, Yes, to, to look at the effect. So right here, after things sort of stabilize, um, the camera's not really moving around a bit. So I'm going to turn on the camera shake, and the, here we see just a subtle little effect. And I think that looks sort of a lot more uh, a lot more realistic. Now I have this blur node, and before I turn this blur node back on, I just want to sort of show the reasoning why that I've done it. And one of the problems with particles is, let me just let this run for a bit, and I'm going to pause it right here. You can see a, sort of a clear delineation between different particles. So there's always sort of a battle that we're fighting between you know, do I crank up the number of particles and then potentially bog down my system? Um, there's not a whole lot of particles here. We're just doing a single trace, but I'm going to be using this very same effect, you know, when we do the sort of the firework explosion and there's going to be uh, potentially thousands of these. So um, if, I, if I make a simple change just from one particle per frame to two particles per frame to sort of fill some of this in, well, then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in trouble as far as uh, my, my workstation in terms of performance. So try to find a spot here. I'm just going to zoom in on this. And if I zoom in really far, then you can see those sort of individual particles from that fast noise. So if I take, oops, my camera shake is off. If I take my blur and I just turn it on, it just sort of smooths those, those out together. Now, the compromise that we're always fighting with this blur is I'm sort of blurring out the edges as well, right? So I, so I want to uh, use this very sparingly. And so what I've done is I sort of have this blur kind of ramping down for the most part, because I notice this effect most at the start of a trail of particles, I kind of crank it up back at the end because as uh, things sort of start to fade away, I was seeing a lot of those sort of individual particles. So that's why I've just added a little bit more blur. And I'm not sure if that's sort of the best way to handle things, but it's the best that I kind of found in terms of a compromise between, you know, adding a whole bunch more particles and getting something that, that kind of works uh, efficiently. So that's why I use this blur, blur modifier. And in terms of the settings, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's really just this blur that I'm, I'm playing with here. And that's this blur size animation that you see here. So that's it. We made a pretty simple um, particle system here that's going to re represent this shell launch. And uh, you know, I'm pretty excited about the next part of this series where we actually start to blow some stuff up. So we will see you then. Take care.